You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Radio Public, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 11th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the middle of middle America, where all of our Republican friends have suddenly gotten real quiet. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Hey, hey everybody. Hey, everybody. I want to. I want to say hi to everybody. Deep breath. <sighs> yeah. You know, whether you're listening on your walk or in your kitchen or in your car or cleaning house or whatever you're doing, mm-hmm. I just want to say hi. Hey, everybody. We're glad you're with us. Yeah. And we love you. And if you would all help me collectively wish my kid brother a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Drift Glass's brother. Yeah. He's a good He's guy. He's a hoot. He's a good He's egg. a hoot. Yep. Who knew Very when good. we were teenagers, he would be a great father and a great husband and a great chef and all kinds of great things. And- we never would have predicted it. Um, we're, we're good at predicting all kinds of things here, but I completely blew that. So, <laughs> not... well, there's a lot about uh, you in high school that no one would have predicted too. I think it, and, I think it goes both and, ways. <laughs> and there's no documentary evidence left, so we're cool with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't of remember places... your brother. Your brother has two daughters. Yes, he does. And, and you have wonderful. two stepdaughters. I do. And who are much younger than his they two are. daughters. And uh, I remember him meeting the two girls, our oh. our two girls, and saying, "Wow, all the old jokes work." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doesn't need to invent anything new. No, mm-hmm. no. So it that's great. Uh, Drip class, we've got a new fake sponsor this week. Yeah. Speaking of uh, uh, high school and places that you might need to leave in a hurry because you've done something terribly wrong. Uh, this week, we'd like to welcome a new sponsor to our family of fake sponsors uh, who haven't been getting all the airtime they deserve but this week we, we've got a brand new one we're bringing it to your attention it's the get me the hell out of here hurry up quick travel agency now are you a beady-eyed political henchman straight out of a donald westlake novel do you need to get the hell out of the country right away no questions asked well get me the hell out of here hurry up quick travel agency has premium seating already reserved in all sorts of flights to all sorts of places at convenient hours to suit every need. Remember, get me the hell out of here. Hurry up, quick travel agency. When you don't know where to go, but you can't stay here. And don't forget the promo code no extradition, <laughs> which will get you a special ticket. And if future generations don't know what the hell we're talking about, just listen to the rest of the podcast. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll catch you up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, boy, will we? Oh gosh, Rudy yeah. Giuliani didn't have a very good week, Drift Glass. No, no, he thinks he had a great week, which makes it all the more he's hilarious. A hero. Yeah, he's the, he's the real hero of the story, and and you know, future generations will know Rudy Giuliani was the hero of the story. Oh no, they won't. Oh my goodness, not. Uh, would you like to start off start us off with a story of? courtroom drama the story of stupid watergate as told by five judges or yeah five court- yeah because the courts were really busy this week and sure. uh first of all uh a federal judge called uh donald trump's dodging of releasing his tax returns to congress repugnant <laughs> and and really the whole argument that the justice department is making that look you can't investigate the president because he's the president Really, Bill Clinton would have been real shocked to hear that yeah. back as, in the nineties. Yeah, as would Richard Nixon. Yeah, as would yeah. basically anybody. Um, but the, it's, but it's, the DOJ did argue that Nixon shouldn't have been impeached this yes, week. They did. they did. The Department of Justice reopened the Nixon case, uh-huh. sort of, sort of um, verbally, and 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 said that Richard Nixon should never have been impeached because uh, presidents show power. For Republican presidents is incontrovertible. Right. Yes, yes. Right. And and any investigation of any Republican president is illegitimate on the face of it, period, mm-hmm. full stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, Betsy DeVos got a reminder from another judge uh, in the case of continuing to bill people from a student loan outfit that uh, – Really, the judge has already ordered them to stop doing it, and the education department is still trying to bilk consumers yeah. on behalf of this uh, corrupt organization. And uh, the judge said to Betsy DeVos, you know, 
I'm not saying I'm going to put you in jail, but it's kind of <laughs> nice to know I can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Just sort of did that head bob, made her flinch. You know, I could I could hurt you real bad. Betsy DeVos is a fan favorite for first Trump cabinet member to go to prison. Yeah. Yeah, she really is. Uh, and and then, I know she's banking on her brother, uh, Eric Prince, the um, to dark bust her Prince, out of prison. The, to bust her out with his mercenary <laughs> army that he is currently trying to uh, sort of low key market to the Trump administration as a way to uh, here you, you get out of Ukraine, but hire us to go in. I was going to say sidestepping. Okay. We've already yeah. sidestepped the State Department with Rudy. Let's just sidestep yeah. the Def- Defense Department and the yeah, Joint just Chiefs. Hire mercenary. Right. Just hire a mercenary. Then wherever you want. Um, and except, so she's counting on her brother, I guess, to bust oh, her out of jail geez. should she go in. Because don't you know who I am, Blue Gal? Don't you know who we are? We're very rich. <laughs> don't you know that we hunt people for sport yeah. on our, oh, wait a minute. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the Supreme Court started to hear a gay rights case, uh, whether Title X applies oh. to transgender people. And mm-hmm. surprise, Neil Gorsuch, of all people, appears mm-hmm. to be, and we're, we can't count on anything, but he appears no. to be the swing vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, he pointed out that uh, it appears as though, in practice, uh, a woman wearing pants and having short hair and mm-hmm. being flat chested at mm-hmm. work, nobody says nothing. Uh, right. A man wearing a dress and long hair uh, and uh, lipstick, everybody has a problem with that. In mm-hmm. which case, that is not discrimination based on transgender. That is discrimination based on gender, period. period. You're, right. you're applying it to men, but not to women. That is discrimination. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and Gorsuch was the one that asked these kinds of questions indicating, you know, I have a problem with this, that you're applying it to men and not to women. Now, you know, obviously a woman can take hormones and grow a beard and do things that in the workplace where a workplace is discriminating, they might notice and take note. But in general, what Gorsuch appeared to be saying, and again, we can't count on anything. Mm -hmm. uh, Lots of women wear pants to work. Lots of women wear suit jackets to work that you yes. know, in another era would have been, would appear very masculine. And it just goes to show you how our society devalues womanhood. You know, we, if you, a man tries to appear as a female, that's, oh, there's yes. something terrible yes. about that. Yes. So uh, in any event, that well, was a surprise. I got, I got into a long discussion about this in a philosophy class mm-hmm. I took 30 years ago, mm-hmm. 25 years ago. Where it, it was no the, the 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 normative value in our society is straight white male, mm-hmm. so the more you the more you tend towards that norm, um, the more you will be forgiven for things. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so if you're if you are a gay man, you are rejecting being a straight man. Right. But if you're a lesbian, you are trying to become more like a guy, sort of in a sort of way. And so we're cool with yeah. that. And it really and is that's that why kind I, of transgender women of color are being murdered in this country under right under the radar and no one seemed well a great deal a lot of people notice and care but it it seems to not rise to the level of an official crisis because of the nature of the people who are the victims right and this case also i was reminded on the radio the other day this is a case that the department of justice cited for the transgender individual under obama this was a case that where the the official position of the Department of Justice flipped 180 degrees when Donald Trump took mm-hmm. office. And that tells you elections actually matter. This is one of the many, 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 many things that people were really just frivolous about when it was who 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 really cares? Yeah. What does it matter? Both sides are corrupt. You know, Hillary and those emails, come on. And, you know, the, the whatever, whatever, whatever. Really, both sides are terrible, Blue Gal. It really doesn't matter who, who the president is or what they do. Well, yeah, it kind of kind of matters a lot. And if nothing else, I would very much like to stop interviewing three guys in a diner. Yeah. And start interviewing all those Jill Stein voters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and all of those people who sat on high purchase, like Matthew Dowden, said it doesn't matter who who's the president. I'm voting independent because both parties are equally corrupt. And really, do the ask them a simple question thing 
that reporters are now doing to Republicans to people who are centrists or both siderists or independents mm-hmm. or Jill Stein voters or, or Susan Sarandon's. Ask them, OK, turns out, did it make a difference who the president was? And, and watch them shit themselves trying to pretend that they didn't believe that or they didn't know or they weren't there or, hey, look, something shiny. Um, it really does matter. Your vote really does matter. The more local you are, it matters more. But um, good God, this is, this is again, a, one of hundreds of things that would have been entirely different under a, a Hillary Clinton administration. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's right. Anyway, I'm sorry I interrupted. Please, no, please continue. Okay. Uh, Ed Meese got the Presidential Medal of Freedom this week, Drift Class. Yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah, he sure did. Which is, you know, perfect <sighs> timing for Trump. To yeah. give the medal that Barack Obama gave to Joe Biden and give it to Ed Meese. Ed Meese. The, Ed the Meese. attorney general who was so corrupt that his department resigned out from under him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, the, the Republicans are good about honoring their criminals. They yeah. just, they, they, they like, there's a the quote about um, architects can't salvage failures, so they just cover their buildings with vines. This is what they do. I mean, you know, Richard Nixon should never have been impeached. Ed Meese deserves a Medal of Freedom. And we're going to go down a few more uh, during the course of the podcast. But they're just not giving up. They're going to redeem every Republican traitor and criminal going back to Joe McCarthy. Mm -hmm. They'll all be saints by the time the Republican Party is, you know, this generation of Republicans is dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, And that is something you should worry about because that means we are moving backwards, not forwards. If we're if we are canonizing. Ed fucking Meese, right. and that's okay with the Republican Party, then something has gone drastically wrong down at the cellular level of the Republican Party and cannot be saved. Hello. Uh, finally, uh, in late breaking news today, we're recording on Friday, federal appeals court voted two to one, with the one being a Trump appointee <laughs> that uh, yeah. the House Oversight Committee does have the right to Donald Trump's financial records. As yes. evidence, uh, this is this is growing right out of Michael Cohen's testimony. Michael mm-hmm. Cohen testified before the committee that Donald Trump devalued his property at tax time and overvalued his property at sales time. Mm-hmm. And Donald Trump's argument is everybody does that. Well, not everybody right. is holding public office. And people right. who get caught doing that do pay fines and deal with the wrath of the IRS. It is not legal to yeah. do this. So, well, not everyone is using their property to launder, you know, Russian, Russian money. mob. Money. <laughs> well, yeah, and and Donald Trump, uh, you and I spoke about this this morning. Uh, Donald Trump's financial records have no right to be private. He is president right. of the United States, so, so called. Uh, as I have mentioned to you and on the podcast before, you know who has pristine tax records? Dick Cheney yeah. has pristine tax records. You know who else had absolute. pristine tax records? Rex Tillerson had mm-hmm. absolute every number, every decimal point in the right place because they wanted to serve a higher purpose of uh, picking yeah. the fruit from the tree right. of the political power they held rather than getting mm-hmm. weeds on their shoes because something on their taxes wasn't right. They served a higher level of corruption. Corruption, right, right. They, they wanted they wanted, you know, global corruption. Right. And they knew they knew they'd made their fortune at working for the oil industry before. They're gonna go get rich after they leave office. It, it's not there's no doubt that these guys are gonna die billionaires or well, and they owe it to their shareholders and rich right. buddies to not allow a someone as low on the totem pole as a reporter to get dirt mm-hmm. on them over something as silly and inconsequential, this is them talking, not me, as a tax return. Right. They learned the lesson of Al Capone. Right. You know, tidy up your taxes. And pay them. Right. Pay your taxes. Keep everything on on, on the up and up when it comes to the financial shit. And you can get away with murder. Right. Uh, But Donald Trump is is as evil as Dick Cheney. And he's as stupid as George Bush. That's it. And he's a (laughs) a fucking lifter. He's he's combining the two. I was was surprised. I don't don't really get surprised by something that Rachel Maddow said. But uh, she was incensed on Thursday night. If you get a chance to go back and watch your show Thursday night, she says, you idiots, to the Trump Mm -hmm. White House. Because yeah. there are paper trails everywhere about what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And it is stupid Watergate. They are just stupid. Uh, the um, 
I went and did a lot of research into the $26 million in profit, in Halliburton profit, that Dick Cheney made while vice, sitting vice president of the United States. And his assertion that he would donate that money to charity. And I went and looked up, mm-hmm. find out what happened to that money. And he did everything right. And I'm, you know, I'm not pra- singing Dick yeah. Cheney's praises. I'm simply saying no, no, he no, got no, a evil. third party uh, investor. He got a third party accountant, someone who was not connected to the White House in any way. They took the money. They donated it to <laughs> a cardiac hospital where Dick Cheney going to get his new heart. You know, yes. it wasn't it wasn't totally not right. in, in his self-interest. But that twenty six million was handled in a in a completely above board legal way. Why? <laughs> because Dick Cheney yeah. wanted to continue to be vice president and give no bid contracts to Halliburton. <laughs> so, so uh, how many how many different times? I forget. It was five times the Watergate burglars broke into the Watergate. I mean, you know, it, this is Dick Cheney's theories. Do it once, exactly right. Do it do it well once. Do it smart once. Don't don't hire bumblefuck. Stop breaking into the same place five different times. Dick Cheney doesn't miss that twenty six million people. No, it doesn't matter to his, yeah. his daughter is in Congress. She's continuing the, the Cheney legacy of being blood An drunk asshole. and evil. Yes. And right. so the, the the horrible family continues to spawn its evil in D.C., which is all Dick Cheney ever really wanted. And he continues to disavow his gay daughter because she's inconvenient. It might as well, she might as well not even exist. So, you know, they have, Cheney has a plan. Mm -hmm. Trump's plan is just to grab as much as he possibly fucking can and stuff his pockets as much as he can. Because there's a hole in his soul the size of a planet that cannot ever be filled. And he's going to stand behind 40 million meat puppets, as you call them, for protection. And And that's... That's how he thinks he's going to get away with it. And yeah. he knows that he has 40 million disposable, frontline, German, good German meatheads who will die for him. Apparently. And really, he doesn't have to worry about anything. He doesn't have to worry about a fucking thing. Because if he blows the whistle, they'll come out in the streets. Yeah. If he blows yeah. the whistle, enough of them in the military will turn the tanks around. I mean, he he really does rely on the fact that I will, I will tear the temple down if you fuck with me. My my army of reprogrammable idiots will destroy this country if you fuck with me. So you better not do it. He is a thug straight up, and that is how he governs. And that is how he, you know, put his boot on the throat of Ukraine. That's how he deals with everybody. And that's why he loves dictators and despises democracies. That's why Putin has him in his pocket and can make him dance any way he wants. He is an awful, horrible, despicable, loathsome human being. And he is the adored idol of 40 million of our friends and neighbors. And there's nothing we can do about the fact that they idolize him. We can get him out of office, but once he's gone, they're still going to be there and they're going to be really mad and but really this is embarrassed. The class when a Fox News poll came out. Yes. Showing a little movement in the Fox News audience sure. towards removal from office. Mm-hmm. And I think there are just enough of them uh, seeing that drawbridge go up who want to climb over before it's too late. All they want to do is put their put their tea party costume back on, right? Slink right. back into the tall grass for a little while, pretend they'd never heard of Donald Trump, and then climb on board with the next fascist the Republican Party runs. Right. That's right. that's their plan, and we can see it. This is like if you've ever read uh, Flatland. You know there there are lines and points. The characters are all lines and points, and a two dimensional creature is lifted into the three dimensions. You can see inside people's houses and their bodies because now he's in the third dimension. We can literally see what the plan is. We can see in four dimensions what the Republican plan is going to be because it's always the same plan. It's fuck everything up, grab as much as you can, trash the place, and when we get caught, pretend we never were there, rely on the media to lie for us and cover our ass as we run away, and then hide out for a while, sabotage anything Democrats try to do, wait until the memory hole claims everything, and then get right back into the business of fucking this country up and blaming liberals. That's the plan. There's nothing more complicated than that. And what they fear most is getting caught in the middle of it. And that's where they are right now. This is why Giuliani stuff is so exciting because they're ter- the Republican Party, the average Republican voter is terrified of being grabbed by the scruff of the neck at this exact moment and being asked exactly the same question that every Republican being asked these questions are shitting themselves over, which is, is it okay for a president to, to ask a foreign power, to pressure a foreign power 
to get dirt on his political opponent. Yes or no. Don't give me Barack Obama. Don't give me Kenya. Don't give me fucking servers. Answer the fucking question. But I think, see, the- I think that's just a test as to whether you are a skilled gaslighter or not. And yeah. Cory Gardner failed the test, not yeah. of standing up to for Trump or uh, not standing up for Trump. He failed the test of not being able to gaslight the reporter who was standing there. You know who's really good at this? Jim Jordan. Jim yeah. Jordan is great at just gaslighting the reporter right in front of him. Trump never did that. You know, and and walk away. Right. Well, and run away. And run away. Um, but the, that Jim Jordan. I'm sorry. Uh, um, uh, Corey Gardner. Yeah. Johnny Ernst. Yep. Um, I, right across the board, people Republicans have been asked this. We've found at least a big chunk of the party's Achilles heel, which is ask them simple questions and and then and wait for them to it, run away. And record it. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. This, and this is the Daily Show. You know. Yeah. Right. This is the whole shtick from the Daily Show. And and here's a fun fact you might not know, Blue Gal. Mm-hmm. Um, asking simple questions will also drive never Trumpers to block you on Twitter. <laughs> I didn't know if you knew I knew that. that. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 exactly the same strategy, except uh, what you you I deploy it without the um, media authority of having ABC, CBS, or NBC beside my name. Yeah. So when I ask a Never Trumper, are you going to tell me that the Republican Party collectively and suddenly in in their tens of millions lost their mind? In 2016, but before that, everything was fine. Yeah. Are you going to sit there and tell me that? Is that true? Yes or no? And that's when they decide to block me. Yeah. And I yeah. consider that personally very rewarding because <laughs> now I have my answer. I have my answer. You are a fucking coward, yeah. sir. You will yeah. not step into the arena with anyone who has any receipt in their back pocket. You will only snuggle up to liberals who will, who will never ask you a tough question. Hey, Drew Plus, I need to um, take over the podcast for a moment. Please. And discuss something that I actually agree with something Donald Trump said. Oh, God. Uh, he I need to take a once, long drink of something strong here. Hold on he a second. He said once that uh, we need to change the libel laws in this country. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what he meant by that, but I agree that we do need to change the libel laws in this country. And uh, I have specific example um, this week. Uh I had a, I don't want to say run in because everything was very cordial and cooperative, but I had an email this week from GoFundMe. Yes. And yes, yes. you and I, and listeners who've caught, are caught up with the podcast, let me put it that yep. way, uh, know that I have a GoFundMe that is to pay for a couple of medical bills and also to help us get to uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio border to see my dad who is uh, being treated for cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going at Thanksgiving to see him. And uh, I decided to make it fun by uh, connecting this GoFundMe to an actual real cease and desist letter that I received Mm -hmm. via email. Uh, It wasn't sent to the right email address, but I did get it uh, from Diamond and Silk uh, demanding that I take down a post where uh, at Crooks and Liars, where I had run a video of them saying something ridiculous and then commented on it. Mm -hmm. I didn't use satire (laughs) it wasn't satire it was a video of them saying something and uh that is fair use that is you know we have a legal person that works for crooks and liars and laughed at it and everyone everyone on twitter i know that's a lawyer said it was hilarious uh Mm -hmm. it's from diamond and silk's legal team that's who signed (laughs) this this pdf right Mm -hmm. And uh, the address listed is a strip mall uh, post office box. And I mean, the whole thing's ridiculous. But I decided to make my GoFundMe fun by making it my legal defense fund against Diamond. You, and Silk. you, you do put the fun in GoFundMe. Huh? Yeah, you I put really the do. fun in GoFundMe. Well, I got an email from GoFundMe and they suspended my account uh, mm-hmm. because someone questioned the veracity of my ask. Uh, And so I was given instructions as to what to do, and and I emailed them back and explained to them what I was doing and how I was – I actually did have a cease and desist letter from Diamond and Silk, and I actually uh, am making fun of that while at the same time being having full disclosure as to where the money is going to go. Mm -hmm. And they wrote me back, and they requested uh, two changes to my GoFundMe based on their own – uh, terms and conditions, 
I can't call it a legal defense fund because it is not going to legal costs. And I cannot use uh, Diamond and Silk's name in my ask because they don't want to get into it. <laughs> and right. uh, the woman was um, who wrote me was very uh, fair, I thought. She said, you know, we are not trying to tell you what to say on your podcast at all. We're not trying. You can say anything you want on your website. You can link to your what to your GoFundMe on your podcast website and your you can make fun about it on your podcast. You can do anything you want. The things that we can't have are these two things. You can't have another company's name on your ask and you right. cannot say legal defense fund if you're not using the money for legal expenses. And this mm -hmm. is to protect us from any lawsuits that might we might incur hosting your Fair fundraiser. Enough. And Fair as enough. soon as I made those two changes, they reenact reactivated my account and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was totally fair. You know, they're protecting their brand and they're, I hope they're this way with everybody. Uh, but it, it, I thought about this because the onion <laughs> did a story this week about <laughs> Devin Nunez. They did. And it was about um, Devin Nunez's leaky prolapsed anus, <laughs> which <laughs> Uh, God bless the onion. You know, they are yeah. a satirical website doing satire and yeah. uh, making fun of Devin Nunez's uh, liking of lawsuits against people who make fun of him on Twitter when he is a public figure. Yes. Uh, an elected official is a public figure. And it is very, very this is this is what I frankly told Diamond and Silk on my post about their. Uh, you know, decease and desist letter. First of all, in their cease and desist letter, they say they are a brand. <laughs> yeah. Which oh, so you're not a person, you're a brand. Okay. That undercuts their argument quite a bit. If you are a brand, you are mm -hmm. that ipso facto, you are a public figure. So uh Devin Nunez as an elected official uh is very petty and is trying to sue Devin Nunez's cow and out yes, everyone. And yeah, just ridiculous. So <laughs> the Onion did a, a post about, thank God they haven't found out about my leaky prolapsed anus, <laughs> you know, because let's go there. All of uh -huh. this comes back to a court case, which many of you may be familiar with, Hustler Magazine versus uh, Jerry, Jerry Bowell. Bowell, right, where yeah. Hustler did a satirical ad in their magazine. Cartoon. Yeah. Intimating that Jerry Falwell had sex with his mother in an outhouse. <laughs> yes. And the yes. court said, look, this is free speech. He's it's obviously not true. And it's mm -hmm. obvious. It wasn't an outhouse. OK, it wasn't an outhouse. <laughs> it's a, it was a shed. <laughs> it was right. a work shed. Right. It was an Applebee's right. is what it was. Okay, and that's, okay. there you go. Yeah. So uh, at any rate. My point is that I think we need different libel laws where mm -hmm. let's face it facebook is supporting election fraud every day by running right now trump ads. right now even as we speak yep, yep. trump ads about joe it. biden that are lies right just let him fly and, just and, for money. and joe biden and hillary clinton before him cannot sue right now because they're public figures and so there is a difference between the onion writing about devin nunez prolapsed anus and clinton cash Right. The book Clinton Cash, where it is, you know, 300 pages of lies about the Clintons, where the author of the book in an interview said, I don't know if any of this is true. Right. But it's passed around from conservative to conservative and linked and talked about on Fox as if, oh, it's a book. It's called Clinton Cash. It's a book. And so, you know, it's true because it's a book. And that is rat fucking in plain sight of the highest order and it should be illegal and it should not be free speech. It is using what is existing libel law to protect you from rat fucking. Yeah. And this actually goes back to um, something that you, you olders out there, mm -hmm. you, you veterans of the liberal blogosphere will remember from Digby Cokie's law. Yes. Cokie's law. Right. Cokie's law, which was uh, about the Clinton scandal. And Koki uh, Roberts, um, a, a veteran Washington, D.C. Beltway reporter, who said, at this point, it doesn't much matter whether she said it or not because it's become part of the culture. 
I was at the beauty parlor yesterday, and this was all anyone was talking about. It doesn't matter if it's true. It's in the air. Everybody's talking so about it. On it. Right. It's in the air. So it's like, oh, you mean every kind of stink bomb, anything we can lob into the public square that creates a giant cloud, a toxic cloud, you'll report on as a story precisely because it's a giant toxic cloud? Which is exactly Terrific. what Mika Brzezinski did this week about Elizabeth Warren. She, she opened did. her pie hole and started talking about conservative media is reporting this on Elizabeth Warren. Hmm? And who cares if it's true, Mika? And and well, it's part of the story. It's part of the conversation. So we have to report. Well, we have to quote unquote report on it as if it's a thing. Well, and this this week uh, today actually, because yeah. uh, I, I I can't stomach it anymore. So I do just skim past it in the morning on my way to making coffee. Make sure the girls are uh, off to school and reading the newspaper and doing a little bit of writing and. And letting me the radio. sleep in, which is really nice. Letting you sleep in. Yeah. Like, no, you know. Wake up, honey. Guess what Rudy Giuliani did is the worst way to wake your wife <laughs> he up. He knows better Just, than to do that. <laughs> gentlemen, here's a hint. Here, here, take it from me. Waking up to read from Ayn Rand or waking up to Rudy Giuliani's latest scandal is not the way to wake up the woman you love. Right. But today, as, as happens often, it was, you know, I love Elizabeth Warren. I really do. But you got to understand. If you nominate anyone but Biden, you'll all lose right. because Americans, Americans out there who we all know, you know, we, we know these Americans. We've traveled. We, we've sniffed them. We know what their asses smell like. We know we've been to the diners. We've read David Brooks columns. We've seen Flyover Country, the movie. And we know that anyone who is to the left of Joe Biden will <laughs> lose, will lose because – it's socialism, and you're scaring the little people out there in the country. Oh, sure, Donald Trump's a traitor, but you know what? You're going to have someone on the election. You go, you know, I have a traitor in one hand and someone who wants to marginally raise the taxes on rich people to pay for stuff and maybe some gun control. I don't know what to do. You know what? That person's always going to find an excuse to follow their heart. And their heart, as I've said before, you scratch a Republican, you're going to find a brown shirt. Mm -hmm. So those people will always find a reason to vote on the fascist side of the ledger because that's who they are. and But it is part of their brand. Speaking of brands, it is, we we must, this is the lifeboat factory right in front of us. The, the Morning Joe show creates more lifeboats per day than pretty much any other media Honest outlet out God. there I can think of. And it's all about, we have to maintain the centrist illusion mm -hmm. That we and we alone are keeping the temple upright through the sheer force of our will. We're holding the right accountable and the left accountable, and we must maintain the center. And and what he's really trying and, to and maintain and course, is his level of payroll taxes. Right. Where he stopped all, paying all payroll the, taxes before Martin Luther King Day. That's the world he wants to live yeah. in. Yeah. And and it's really important to continue this illusion that you never put anyone on that panel who says otherwise, yeah. who will bring a, a receipt to the table and say, hey, guess what? You're full of shit. You don't know what you're talking about. Um, and speaking of Elizabeth Warren, uh, she killed a guy on stage <laughs> yesterday. She killed him. And even she killed Angelico, him she I, told him to marry one woman if you can find one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was it was like, wow, so you've been working on your time. You've been watching old what Jack Benny tapes mm -hmm. or something, because she was just sitting there going, hey, wait a beat, wait a full beat, bam, and he was dead. Yep. And it was worth worth seeing. I, I don't I not bring that up to advocate for any particular candidate. I'm not. I'm not taking money from anybody. We're going to vote in the primaries long after it'll be too late yeah, anyway because right. we're Illinois. Our Illinois is but, April, so we're we're expecting that it will be bo it will boil down to one candidate by that time. But that's okay. I, I would, if, if I may talk for just a moment about Paul Krugman. You may po talk about Paul Krugman for one minute. Yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe three minutes. It might last more than three minutes. I, Paul Krugman in the in the asking simple question department. Mm -hmm. Came very close to being there with me. He and I almost became one being I, under the. I think under he the went hook. as close to full drift class as he ever has. Yes, as he can, as he really can. Because this week, uh, Dr. Krugman, Nobel Prize winning person, Dr. Krugman, said uh, wrote a column on the education of fanatical centrists. Will they finally admit what the GOP has become? And for my own amusement, I changed the column slightly for my own reading because. According to the Quaint Antebellum Customs of the New York Times, uh, Dr. Krugman is not allowed to say what he's really talking about, which is that I'm talking about David Brooks. So strictly for my own amusement, I added things like, 
I'm talking about cloistered hacks like David fucking Brooks and David fucking Brooks this and David Brooks that. So, but his, 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 the point of his story was centrists have run out of uh, runway. There's no place for them to hide anymore. Um, he's talking about the people who, and he said, you know, the, the, forget the extremists, forget the right wing. They're lost to reason. You're never going to find them. The people who are really interesting right now are the people who have played an outsized role in elite opinion and media coverage. That's his direct quote. And might actually be willing to concede that Donald Trump is the bad guy, but otherwise maintain in the teeth of the evidence that the two major parties are basically equivalent. And it looks like maybe, maybe, maybe we reach the point where they have to, they've been backed into a corner where they can no longer say mm -hmm. that. And this is where um, he and I have to part company. Because he really does hold out hope that maybe, maybe at last, at last, Don, they can admit that Donald Trump, quote, isn't an aberration. He, he's unusually blatant and godly corrupt, but at a basic level, he's the culmination of where his party has been going for decades. And maybe, maybe it's time for the centrist to face up to that uncomfortable reality. And my only point is they will never do that, right. ever. Because the minute they do that, they, they, they lose their careers over. Because their whole career, there's nothing. There's literally nothing they've been doing for the last 10, 15, 20 years than spouting centrist bullshit. And if they have to sit there and say, you know what? For the last 20, 30 years, I've been completely fucking wrong about my one job. My one job has been reporting what's really going on inside American politics. And for 20 years, I have been completely, utterly dead wrong about everything. That is the last you will ever hear from them. And there's just too many people involved. There are too many presidents of networks. There's too many newspapers. There's too many op-ed editors. There's too many people who are hooked into this lie as their central pillar of their business model for them to all say suddenly, you know what? We all got it wrong. Because the next question is, well, how did you get it wrong? It was fucking obvious. Go ask Drift Class. He lives in a cornfield. He's been stuck in this shit for 20 years. How did you get everything so fucking wrong on five, six, oh, six seven-figure salaries a year and and the 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 respect and plaudits and 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 perks and privileges that go along with being a belt, revered beltway elder sage how the hell did you get everything wrong all this time while out in the world there were real people telling you the whole fucking time shouting waving their arms and you just ignored mm -hmm. them how did you get this so wrong so are you uh deeply corrupt are you have you just been lying to the public for 20 years or are you this fucking stupid because there's no place else to go after you admit I've been wrong about everything for 20 years. Yeah, but I don't want to promote, you know, hysterical conspiracy theories. I just see so much weight in Mika Brzezinski's audible gasp. Yes. When someone said what you just said on yes. the air. Yes. She, no. she just went, oh! <gasps> like, you know, you know, Davis Brooks has been wrong about everything. <gasps> that actually happened, by the way. That actually happened on her show. Mm -hmm. And in that gasp, there is a story, and yes. I don't know what the story is. And it may be a very simple, uncomplicated <laughs> thing where she just reveres him and that's all. But to me, there's a story there that is as yet untold. So, hey, Drift Class, we got to talk about our congressman. We do. Rodney oh, we have two congress people, and there's two different stories about two different yeah. congressmen. Yeah, well, I mean, the, uh, Shim the Shimkus one, Shimkus used to be our congressman before yeah. redistricting, yeah. so... Uh, and Shimkus moved uh, east to a safer district and left in his place mm -hmm. Rodney Davis, who was his staff assistant. Yes. So, yes. you know, we we got a two for one now in, in South Central Illinois. But Shimkus is retiring. Right. And so on, on the way out, uh, rather than let the door hit his ass, he a, decided to criticize Donald Trump for uh, his actions in Syria. And John Shimkus is his one thing. He's the congressman from coal. Uh -huh, right. He he oh, and he, he wants to make coal ash a food group, for God's sake. I'm he not does. kidding. He's, He's just a horrible person. Horrible. Yeah. Right down yeah. to the but he as most Republicans do, when they leave office, when they suddenly there's no more nothing more at stake, their job is no longer on the line. Suddenly they discover a tiny vein of courage and say, you know what? Maybe Donald Trump is really kind of a bad guy. We should let yeah. him. Of course. Yeah. Uh, but uh, of course, that's on your way out. Rodney Davis wants to keep his job. <laughs> and, and he's going to have a uphill climb. We're really going to work hard this time yeah. to kick him out of office. Uh, 
And he decided to write a. I said it was to you earlier today, Drift Class. It was a two page letter. It's a three page letter, Drift yeah, Class. Yeah, he wrote a, three, a long letter of complaint. A three Dear- page letter to the Federal Election Commission. Oh, no, I, I thought he was writing to Penthouse. <laughs> I never, I never thought it would happen to I me. I never thought it would happen to me. Guess yeah, what happened? No, he, didn't. So he wrote no. to the FEC complaining about their chairman politicizing stuff and attacking the president on, on public media outlets. Mm-hmm. And Ellen Weintraub, who is the uh, said <laughs> FEC chair, said, you're not going to silence me. And she tweeted out pictures of his letter yeah. where now, everybody now, could read it. <laughs> tell our tell our, our eager listeners exactly how she politicized this and how she attacked Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, well, she politicizes and attacks Donald Trump by restating the law, the election law. Right. That's it. And, that's all she did. <laughs> well, she, she doesn't particularly like Donald Trump. That, that, that no. She doesn't hide that, but no. uh, she will not comment on specific cases on television. She simply says, there is a very, this is the law, number one. And number two, there's a very specific, important reason why this is the law. Yes. And opening our elected officials up to blackmail and corruption, et cetera, et cetera, is why the law is written the way it is. And you can then take the law, as I have stated, and compare it to Donald Trump's actions and make your own conclusions. It really is up to prosecutors to determine whether or not. Donald Trump's actions uh, match up to the law, as I have just stated it, which obviously doesn't. <laughs> right. I, and, as a public servant, I'm here simply to explain what the law says I want to and tell why you what the law says. Yeah. And as I said in my post about this today, because by the way, Rodney Davis is not particularly bright. He doesn't hold town halls. He's not interested no. in what I have to say. He does uh, tele town halls with pre-selected questioners that you can call in and listen to if you want to listen to him. Uh, All she did was explain the law, and then she tweeted out his letter. And then she went on CNN this morning and said, yeah, he's not going to silence me. But the point is, a post that I wrote this morning, what Ellen Weintraub is doing is pulling a Barack Obama. Yes. yes, Barack Obama was prevented from having any legislative accomplishments by Mitch McConnell. Right. Donald Trump is preventing the Federal Election Commission from having any accomplishments whatsoever by not filling vacancies so that they do not have a quorum and cannot enact or enforce any election laws. Yeah, They they were toothless before this, but now they can't even meet. Well, and they were 50-50 Republican Democrat, in which case the Republicans just said, oh, fuck it. Whenever Republicans were in office, they they didn't want to talk about anything to do with election fraud, uh, except, you know, voter ID. So, uh, So Ellen Weintraub has had all of the actual power as the federal election commission taken away from her by Trump. So -hmm. now she's just going on television and explaining the law. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what Barack Obama did when all of his legislative accomplishments, the ability to have those was taken away from him. He went out and uh, became a very popular president doing popular things out in public. Explaining things. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Good for good for Ellen Weintraub. I'm glad she is in the job that she is and that she is doing her job. Nice. Let's read. Uh, the news roundup is almost all the same topic. Oh, I do want uh, to do one more thing. I do want to do one more mention because sort of this is a callback, by the way, because right. it's about Rudy Giuliani. And that's where we're about we're about to go. We're there. about to launch into a lot of Rudy yeah. news, right? Um, but as layer after layer of Trump and Giuliani's off book foreign policy are peeled away. And we see how utterly corrupt it is and how treasonous it is and how, how utterly contemptuous of checks and balances they are. Um, alert listener, one of our listeners named Ravi, I'm not sure if I can use his last name, so I won't, wanted to make sure that no one forgot the name of Doug Fife. Oh, yeah. Now, who is Doug Fife? Because this is like, oh, my God. Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump are running. This is utterly unprecedented. No one's ever – I mean, who – Oh my gosh, this is uh, ah, first time. No, who's Doug Fife? Doug Fife uh, is someone a Pentagon Inspector General report found that Doug Fife's office had developed, produced, and then disseminated alternative intelligence assessments on the Iraq and the Al Qaeda relationship, which included some conclusions that were inconsistent with the consensus of the intelligence community. They were lies. This is 
<laughs> lawyer wonk talk for Doug Fife, who's in charge of cooking up bullshit intelligence to help right. George Bush lie us into the wrong war. Correct. This is something Republicans do, they not do Donald Trump. Right. This is something Republicans do. Now, you might ask yourself, oh, my God, Doug Fife sounds like a pretty awful guy. In what institution is he currently serving? What jail serving is he time? sitting in right yeah. now? He's serving a time at a federal institution called the Hudson Institute. <laughs> Where he is a senior fellow and paid an awful lot of money to not do much of anything except complain about He's got the a fact job that- for life because yes, he, he served the cause. Right, right. Now, why do we have a traitor like Donald Trump and a monster like Rudy Giuliani and all of the menagerie of horrors and freaks and grifters and idiots in power now? Because people like Doug Feith were let off the hook. Right, right. Because we thought this country taught republicans that they were allowed to get away with murder reagan bush got away with iran contra nobody said shit they lied about deficits nobody said shit george bush got away with torture surveillance lying us into the wrong war yep. sleeping through terror attack and, now he gets and to sit with ellen at a baseball game yeah, yeah. And, and we get to be lectured by david axelrod on the importance of kindness yep that, all the celebrities except for one the only pr- the only celebrity that didn't circle the wagons on that was mark ruffalo and he yeah. said, uh, you who, unless he's been put on trial at The Hague and exonerated, uh, you, you don't have to do civility with someone who lied us into war and killed 150,000 Iraqi civilians. Uh, and I, I do want to point out, too, just as far as this podcast is concerned, uh, we haven't talked a lot about the Kurds or Syria or the clusterfuck that Donald Trump created out of whole cloth mm-hmm. this week. Because if I start talking about Syrian children, I'm never going to stop crying. And that's, I mean, you could have a podcast of me crying for an hour and, you know, we could do that at some point. But uh, I got a wonderful email from our friend Lee who talked about it and, you know, just how hopeless it is. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to start talking about Syrian children right now, but uh, I'm so angry (laughs) about this whole thing. Uh, Mm -hmm. But thank you to Mark Ruffalo, who does follow me on Twitter. Yes, he does. And I follow him back. Uh, for standing up for truth and actual, you know, no, this is really, we really don't have to be civil to bigots, barbarians, racist people and murderers. Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't, we're not obliged to be civil to people who do think civility is a weakness. Yeah. We're not obliged to be forgiving to people who think forgiveness is licensed to do even worse shit in the future. If they learn their lesson, that's a whole different matter, but no, that's insane. That's just insane. I would like to mention one other thing uh, that, that is fun, that looks like it might be fun. And okay. it's politically related. This Sunday is the anniversary of the Lincoln-Douglas debate that took place in Quincy, Illinois. And our local library, the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library, is going to be pretending on Twitter to be at the event and will be live tweeting the Lincoln-Douglas debate in Quincy, Illinois. They invite all Twitter users, that's you, me, and everybody who wants to, to follow the insults, quote, accusations, heckling, and, of course, a serious discussion of slavery. All right. That slowly actually looks- and carefully read out. Do you have the Twitter handle of the – I do not account? because people out there in the world can look up Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library. Okay, that's Lincoln- it. That's what they need Lincoln to look up on Twitter. Yep. And go. That's, that's all you it. need to do. Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library. Look that up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's do a news roundup. This week, Turkey launched a bombing campaign against U.S. allied Kurdish forces in northeastern Syria following Trump's quote-unquote decision to unilaterally pull U.S. forces from the region. Trump invited Erdogan to visit the White House a day after giving Turkey the green light to attack the Kurds. Trump publicly justified his decision by saying that since, quote, the Kurds didn't fight with us at Normandy, quote, unquote, we didn't owe them anything. Yeah. Oh. Uh, asked about the two henchmen with ties to Rudy Giuliani who were arrested earlier yesterday. Donald Trump said, I don't know those gentlemen. Now, it's possible I have a picture with them because I have a picture with everybody. He then added, maybe they were clients of Rudy. You have to ask Rudy. Except, of course, Rudy said they were part of your legal team, which I find very confusing. Also, the pictures that were taken were in the White House with you and Rudy, or with Rudy and the head of your super PAC. Not you weren't there, Donald Trump, but... The head of your super PAC was, and your son was, at a dinner at the White House. So, yeah, we know who they are, and we know you know they were. 
Trump ordered Energy Secretary Rick Perry and two top State Department officials to deal directly with Giuliani, again, directly with Giuliani, Mm -hmm. when setting up a May 23rd meeting between Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and Donald Trump. And Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani pressured then Secretary of State Rex Tillerson during a meeting in 2017 to persuade the Department of Justice to, hey, how about you drop a criminal case against one of my friend Rudy's clients? He's a good guy. You shouldn't be pushing him around. You got to do that? You going to do that? You my friend Rick? Uh, uh, Rick? Rex, is that your name? Rex? You want the job, Rex? How about you go a little light on my buddy here? Straight up mob shit. And now it's all coming out in the uh, coming out in the wash. Trump gave a politically appointed official the authority to withhold nearly $400 million in U.S. military aid to Ukraine after career staff at the Office of Management and Budget questioned the legality of delaying the funds. This is where where Rachel Maddow said there's a paper trail of changing the duties of the career people to political people. Yep, there sure is. Uh, this week, Donald Trump took a bite out of Fox News's ass over a recent poll that shows that 51% of respondents want him impeached and removed from office. This is a direct quote. From the day I announced I was running for president, I have never had a good Fox News poll. He added, oh, well, I'm president. Trump is reportedly calling Mitch McConnell up to three times per day in order to make sure he can maintain the loyalty of the Republican Party as he faces an impeachment inquiry from House Democrats. Yeah. I don't know how this is all going to play out. We've reached a point in our political... Usually you and I are pretty good at sort of doping out what this... There's one scenario where Mitch McConnell just figures, this guy's too much. Mm -hmm. We can't have this anymore. You know what? We're going to let him... We're going to do a voice uh, vote. (laughs) We're going to let him take... We're going to let him go off the edge of it. Because you know what? This is... I've done the columns and the liabilities now wildly outweigh the advantages. I've got all all the the judges I'm ever going to get. All the tax cuts I'm ever going to get, mm-hmm. might as well dump this guy now. There's another scenario that says I have to protect my people. And if we say one harsh word about this lunatic, he's going to tweet storm us all. And we're all going to be out on our ass. So this it could, it could play out a whole bunch of different ways. But right now, all of the arrows are in the Democrats' quiver. Mm-hmm. This is this. The Republicans are now playing 100% defense. Right. They have nothing to offer. Well, and that's they, what they, I said they, last week, that this is – Mitch McConnell's problem, not our problem. We are simply Absolutely. investigating and, and watching them trip over the own dicks three to- three or four times a day. Something new is coming out. And and Donald Trump will obligingly go to a either a hate rally and scream about um, refugees right. and, or and, and just and pretend that he's he's Peter Strzok having sex, <laughs> which he did yesterday, mm. which was creepy and horrifying and made his meathead friends and, and fans love it. Or he'll just blurt out on television, I did crimes. I did a lot of crimes, okay? I do crimes all the time. I, I paid and for crimes. I also paid people I to paid, do crimes. Yeah. I paid for them to shut now up, and the they hook. didn't shut up. Right. And now that's their problem, because I paid them to shut the fuck up. And that's what the Republican Party bought when they bought this shit pile. This is what the Republican Party created when 30 years ago they decided this is the road they wanted to go down. And one of these days, we're going to have a big old lawyer jerker. We're going to have a big old... Uh, cultural discussion about how the hell we ever got into this position. And I would like to be at that table to ask a few people a few pointed questions. Anyway. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. And this week's Internet Kitty is actually a dog. We heard from what? we heard from friend of the show, Beth, who wrote us and said, my rescue dog, Layla, with her Humpty Trumpty squeaky toy. We found a toy at an indie pet store in Buffalo, New York, while visiting my parents last month. And I found you guys on Google Podcasts under Pods Liked by Stephanie Miller Show listeners. Well, thank you for finding us. Yeah. She said, you guys are great. And the sanity I need to deal with this dumpster fire administration. Beth, you owe Drift Glass a nickel. Well, you know what? This time I'll wave it. You're going to wave it. Oh, that's wonderful. Dumpster fire was actually coined by Drift Glass many years ago. Uh, 2006, yeah, five or six. Five or six, yep. when a mainstream media outlet uses it, we, we need mm-hmm. the nickel. You know, that's the thing. Yes. Thank you. Oh, I, there's, hmm? there's a new phrase you're all required to use. I've trademarked it early because it's going to become popular. It's political piss trough. So Political just, piss trough. Okay. Yes. All right. Piss trough. Oh. Uh, so Layla is a beautiful, beautiful dog with, with just delightful eyes and looks so loving. 
And of course, Layla Eats Freshly Poured Pet Food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your pet will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. You can visit Layla. Oh, sh- Layla is such a sweet doggy. Please visit Layla at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com. Please put the word kitty in your subject line. And you can also write to both of us at prolefpodcast at gmail.com. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can too. I know that our GoFundMe just says Blue Gals Fundraiser on it now, but you know what I mean. And yeah, come on, people. <laughs> see our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We've got all the links there for PayPal, our postal address information, our GoFundMe, our Patreon. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Driftglass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are on their way to Vienna now that two first-class seats have suddenly opened up. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.